Hello everybody, Jennifer Maker here. It's a beautiful day to learn how to make gorgeous bows using ribbon or paper. I have some great tips and techniques to help you really up your gift and decor skills this season. So let's head on over to the craft table and we'll get started. I love making bows because they add so much interest to any project and you can customize them in so many ways. I'm gonna show you seven beautiful bows to make with ribbon. They're all really, really easy and will look perfect on your gifts or decorations. I used a variety of ribbon, material, widths, and colors, but the ones with wire in the edges really work best. You can try them with the ribbons in the material list and definitely experiment to find your favorites. All you need for them is a hot glue gun and a way to tie your ribbons such as zip ties, twisty ties, or even pipe cleaners. You'll also want a pair of scissors and I recommend a ruler if you want to be detailed, but honestly I mostly guessed at my ribbon lengths. <laughs> I can't wait to show them to you. And while I love working with ribbon, I knew we could also make a beautiful paper bow to easily cut on a Cricut cutting machine. I am thrilled with the result and I hope you love it too. I'm sharing two versions with you, one that you can scale up or down to make different sizes based on your own needs. The most important part of the project is using high quality solid core cardstock that has the same color on both sides. If there's something on the back, make sure that you like it since it will probably peek out of your bow. The cardstock is really the star of the show here, so this is a great opportunity to use some of your special stash that you've been saving. I use my favorite 12 by 12 65 pound cardstock for most of the layers, but I added some white glitter cardstock for sparkle. I used a detailed design for the glitter, so stick around to see which cut setting I had the best results with. The bows cut nicely on any Cricut cutting machine, even a Joy, if you use the scalable version like this one, and then make it small. You'll need the fine point blade, a green standard grip machine mat, and a brayer to stick the paper down well. A spatula and a scraper will also help with some of the delicate pieces. When you put everything together, you can use either craft glue or you can just use these little brads, and I'll show you how to use both here. Now, if you wanna add a bit more detail, we can do that with a bone folder or a scraper. Now, let's make the perfect bow. Here are some of my favorite styles of bows. I'll tell you about how much ribbon I use for each one, but do experiment to make yours bigger or smaller. To make a six inch bow using two inch wire edge ribbon, cut one piece about 30 inches and another about two and three quarter inches long. Overlap the ends of the long piece to make a loop in the middle. The loop should be smaller than the loose ends hanging down. Push the top center of the loop down to meet where the ribbon crosses itself. Pinch the loop and crossed ribbons together and secure them with a zip tie or twisty tie. Remember to trim the ends. Fold the long edges of the small piece in toward the middle, roughly in thirds, and secure it with hot glue. Wrap the rectangle, unglued side out, around the center of the bow and glue the ends together. Match up the ends of the loose ribbons and trim them to the same length and end shape. Fluff the bow and add it to a gift. To make a bow about nine inches wide using two and a half inch wire edged ribbon, Start with a piece of ribbon 56 inches long. Starting at one end, fold the ribbon back and forth on itself to form three equal length layers. The final layer will have a loose end. Hold all the layers in the middle and rotate the top loose layer so that it forms a loop in the middle. Pinch the layers together under the loop and secure a zip tie or a twisty tie through the loop and around the rest. Now fluff the bow layers out to the sides. Cut the end short on the back of the bow. Match up the loose ends and trim them to the same length and shape. The bow is now ready to use. 
To make a bow about 8 inches wide using 2.5 inch wire edged ribbon, cut one piece of ribbon about 36 inches, one piece about 18 inches, and one about 2 and 3 quarter inches. Form the longest piece of ribbon into a figure 8, with the ends slightly overlapping in the middle, like this. Hot glue them in place. Bring the center of each loop to the middle and pinch them together. Secure the layers with a zip tie or twisty tie and trim it in the back. Now fluff the ribbon loops. Fold the long edges of the smallest piece in toward the middle, roughly in thirds, and secure it with hot glue. Use the last piece to create the loose ribbon ends. Place the ribbon loops middle in the center of the long piece. Wrap the rectangle, unglued side out, around the bow center and glue the ends together. Match up the loose ribbon ends and trim them to the same length and end shape. Your bow is now ready to use. To make a 7 inch wide bow using 2.5 inch wire edged ribbon, cut one piece of ribbon about 60 inches long. Go longer if you want a really full bow. Wrap the ribbon around your hand like you're rolling it back into the tube that it came on to form a layered loop, like this. Now flatten the circle. Unwind just enough ribbon to make a piece about the same length as the compressed circle and cut it off. Now set it aside. Cut the corners on each side of the circle to form wedges. Open the circle back up, match up the cut wedge shapes and pinch them together. Now the sides are intact and the middle is skinny. Layer the small piece of ribbon from earlier on top of the pinched area and secure everything with a zip tie or twisty tie. Then trim the extra. Pull out the loops from inside each side of the bow and fluff to form the pom-pom. Enjoy your bow! To make an 8.5 inch wide bow using 2.5 inch wire edged ribbon, Cut three 18 inch pieces, a 9 inch piece, and one about 4 inches. Hot glue the end of the three matching pieces to make three loops. Glue the small piece into a smaller loop, just like this. Flatten the larger loops and stack them on top of each other, glue side down. Place the small loop on top in the middle. Slide a zip tie or twisty tie through the top loop and around the stack and trim the extra after pulling it tight. Match up the loose ribbon ends and trim them to the same length and end shape. Fluff your bow and enjoy! Gather as many scrap pieces of ribbon together as you like to make this bow. They can be all different colors, ribbon types, and widths. Have fun, go crazy. Choose one thinner piece of ribbon to be the center tie and lay it down straight. Stack all of the other pieces of ribbon on top crosswise. Tie a knot with a single piece of ribbon to hold all the pieces together in the middle. And then just fluff up your bow and enjoy it. To make a 10 inch wide bow, cut several pieces of ribbon about 24 inches long. You can use all the same ribbon or use different widths, styles, and colors to add interest. The more ribbons you add, the fuller your final bow will be. Make a loop with some loose ribbon hanging down. Pinch the ribbon in the middle to hold the loop in place. Make loops in each of the ribbons, pinching them and adding them to the others. Secure a zip tie or twisty tie around the bottoms of the loops and trim the extra tie. Fluff out the ribbon loops to hide the zip tie, trim the ribbon ends, attach it to the top of your tree, and enjoy! Step 1. Get my free paper bow files. 
go to jennifermaker.com slash 439 and look for libraries in the red bar at the top. Then either click get a password if you don't yet have one or click enter the library. You can find the designs on the page by searching for number 439 and then click it to download the zip file. The folder includes one version with most of the pieces stacked that creates a perfect 6 inch bow. If you'd like to make a bigger bow, use the file with scale in the title. You can cut these bows by hand with the PDF patterns in my file, but I'm going to show you how to cut them faster and more precisely with a cutting machine. Today I'm using a Cricut Maker 3, but you can also use an Explorer. And at the original size, you can also cut this one on a Cricut Joy. Upload the SVG cut file you want to your design software. If you're not sure how to do this, go to jennifermaker.com slash svgs to learn how to unzip and upload files. Step 2. Prepare your bow designs. Here is how the connected base bow file looks on my canvas in Cricut Design Space. It consists of three base pieces, including one with detailed cutouts, a top knot piece, and two ribbon end pieces. Each base piece has arms coming out from the center that easily fold in to create the curving ribbon effect. The connected base file is ready to cut. You could make it smaller, but any bigger, and it won't fit on a machine mat. For bigger bows, the scalable version is perfect. The knot and ribbon end pieces are the same, but the arms are cut separately from each other. Assembled, the bow will be about half the size of the largest arm, not counting the ribbon ends. So that's how you change the dimensions to create a specific sized bow. We'll use a guide to help get it right without changing the piece's proportions. To do this, add a square from the Shape menu under the Free section. Now to make a 5-inch bow, we'll need the largest arm to be about 10 inches tall. So make your square the same height as you would like to make the largest arm by changing the height at the top of the canvas. When choosing a size, keep in mind that the arm must be small enough to fit on the machine mat, so no larger than 11 and a half inches. I'm going to make my square 10 inches tall. Now, with the square selected on your canvas, choose Guide from the Operation menu. The square will turn pink and it will show on the canvas, but it will not cut out. It's just there for your reference. Make sure all the pieces of the bow are selected and still grouped. Then click and drag a corner of the bounding box out to resize the design. Keep going until the largest arm piece is the height of your guide. It is now ready to cut. If you're making more than one bow at a time and would like to have them cut with different colors on different mats, select the design and click ungroup above the layers panel. Now select each of the matching pieces that need to be changed to a new color. You can select more than one piece at a time by holding the shift key down on your keyboard or by dragging a bounding box around them. I'll change the detailed arms first. Finally, click the color box on the top menu next to Operation. Select your new color and your pieces will change to match. I'll make mine yellow. I'll make the other arms, top and ribbon ends, green. And you are now ready to cut. Step 3. Cut your paper bow files. When you're ready to cut, make sure the correct machine is selected in the top right and click Make It. Cricut Design Space reorders the mats according to its color order preference, so they won't be in your layer order. But that's okay, don't worry. Just check that you have the right pieces. The connected bow should take three mats. The scalable bow will use a different number of mats based on the size. I noticed the scalable detailed arm by itself could fit on the other yellow mat to save time and materials. So to move a piece, select it, and then click the three dots on the upper left and select Move Object. A menu will pop up with a list of all the mats. Select the mat you wish to move the piece to and then click Confirm. The piece will now appear on the selected mat. 
Make sure to fit it into a blank space, dragging and rotating it before moving on, and then click continue. On the make screen, select the correct material setting for your mats. My first mat is the attached white detail arms, which I want to use white glitter cardstock for. There is a glitter cardstock setting, but because I have a lot of small cuts in this layer, I found that using cardstock for intricate cuts as my setting worked the best. And I got the best results with more pressure too. Make sure the fine point blade is loaded into your machine. Place your first piece of cardstock face up on your green standard grip machine mat and make sure it's well adhered with a brayer. Load the mat into your Cricut and press the flashing button to begin cutting. If you run into any issues, check out my Cricut tips and tricks for cleaner cuts at jennifermaker.com slash blades. Once the cutting is complete, unload your mat, flip it over onto your work surface, and gently roll it back to release the cardstock. You can use a spatula to slide under the delicate pieces to remove them without ripping or tearing. Remove any remaining pieces with a scraper and then add your next color. I use 65 pound cardstock for everything else, which cut well using the light cardstock setting with more pressure. Continue to load, cut, and remove mats and cardstock until all the pieces are cut and ready to assemble. Step four, assemble the paper bow. Let's put the attached bow together first. You can use either craft glue or a brad to assemble your bows. I'll use glue for the attached bow and a brad for the other version so you can see it both ways. Take the largest base layer and add glue around the cutout circle at the end of an arm. Curl it in to line up the cut circle with the one in the middle. Glue the rest of the arms, layering them in the middle. Set it aside to dry. Follow the same steps on the other two base layers. Once it's dry, you can adjust the thin pieces of the middle detail layer so they lay nicely or fluff out a bit, depending on your preference. Then add glue to the bottom of the middle layer's center and press it on top of the largest layer. You can rotate them a bit so the curled arms are nestled. Glue the top layer to that assembly. Curl the knot piece into a loop until the pre-cut holes match up and secure the overlapping area with glue. Then set it aside to dry. After the knot piece has dried, glue the back of it where the hole is and place it in the middle of the topmost base layer. Finally, glue the ribbons to the bottom so the ends peek out as much as you like. You can curl the ends with a bone folder if you want. And your bow is now ready to use. Now let's look at how to assemble the scalable bow. We're going to assemble the scalable bow using a brad. It's easier to put together from the top down. Curl the knot piece into a loop until the pre-cut holes match up and slide the brad through them from inside the loop out. The brad's legs should face down just like this. Take an arm for the smallest layer and place the cutout circle at the thinner end of the brad's post. Continue adding the other three smallest arms in the same way. Space them out like a plus sign. Starting with the first one you added, curl the wide end of each arm up toward the bottom and press the brad post through the center hole. Next, add the middle layer in the same way. Since these have the thin details, you can compress them a bit to spread out the pieces. Now add the arms for the largest layer and press the brad post through the center hole. Finally, add the ribbon pieces at the bottom and separate the brad post to hold it all together. To complete the look, rotate each arm layer to set it in the shape you wish. Fluff the middle base layer to arrange the thinner pieces and curl the bottom ribbons with a bone folder. Isn't this awesome? 
Now you have lots of bow options for all of your gift and decor needs. Do you have a favorite? Tell me in the comments, I wanna know. I love how my paper bow turned out, but I still think my favorite is the tree topper bow because you can make it as elaborate or as simple as you like. Isn't it awesome? The easiest is definitely the scrap bow because you just have to stack a bunch of extra pieces and tie them together. It does not get any easier than that. And it's a great way to use pieces that aren't big enough for other bows. And it's super cute to boot. Most of the ribbons can be taped to a package. You could also thread some thinner ribbon through a few loops if you need to tie the bows to an item. I really hope you'll make these bows and share the different combinations and the ways that you can use them with us. I would love to see your photos. Now, if you have any questions about making bows or anything that I didn't answer here that you're curious about, please let me know. Leave your question in the comments or come on over and ask in our awesome Cricut Crafters group at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Crafters. We are an awesome group. We love to help and inspire you. And that's it for today. Until next time, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love.